Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today, very excited to check it out. That's a question from CGE. This is for three to six players. Take about 30 minutes to play, and it's for ages 15 plus. And in that's a question, once each round, someone is going to get asked a question. And then everyone else is going to try to predict that question person's answer. There's also some bonus modifiers for getting answers correct or other people getting answers wrong and you're going to be trying to move your squirrel to the top of a mountain to get nuts or something like that. It's a party style game from Vlada Shavato, one of the best game designers out there, but is it good? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alright then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of That's a Question. So first of all, we're going to a handy dandy rule booklet. It's 12 pages, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, and it's very well done. That being said though, I felt like it was just way too long for how simple the game is, and I worry that it might scare some people off, uh, because they're going to they're gonna be like, oh, this is a really simple game. It takes, you know, 15 plus minutes, and then they're going to open it and be like, oh my gosh, look at all this text, look at all these rules. In actuality, you only really need the yellow parts and maybe a couple extra sentences, but still, I just felt like the rule booklet was too long for what the game was. But that's a your mileage may vary kind of thing. But in that's a question, you are going to be trying to move your squirrel up the mountain by answering questions correctly, by predicting what other people are going to, how other people are going to answer a simple A, B question. So what am I talking about? Let's go over the components. Let's get into the gameplay. So first, everyone is going to get these right here. You're going to get a squirrel of your color. You're going to get an A and B token, which you'll be using when people ask you questions. And also, when you're predicting what other people, uh, how other people answered questions, then you're going to get these two kickers right here, which will give you bonus modifiers if you get answers correct or if other people get answers incorrect. And I'll explain those a little bit more later. Next, you're going to have your board right here, and right now I believe I'm on a 3 and 4 player board, but it is double sided to be a 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 player board. It doesn't change too much, just how many cards are going to be in this stack for the most part. Uh, another thing you're going to get is this little doodad right here, which is where you're going to ask questions. And there's three types of questions you'll be able to ask. Whom do you consider worse? Someone who A or B. <clears throat> which of these would you choose, A or B? And which would you miss more if it ceased to exist, A or B? And this will make a little bit more sense once I show you the cards, which are these right here. They're going to be three-sided cards. On this side, you'd put this answer over here on the green side. Obviously, this one goes up with the blue, and this one goes up with the uh, orange slash brown right there. And you're going to pick two of those when you are the person asking the question. Uh, next you're gonna get these acorns, which seem really unnecessary, but these are gonna make it so that everybody has roughly the same amount of turns. Uh, I felt like there could have been a cleaner way to do this, but uh, whatever. Uh, I'll explain more of this when we get into the gameplay itself. Last but not least, you're going to have the stack of cards right here. This is where you're going to draw cards when you play two of your cards. And once that stack runs out, you'll play one more round, and whoever has the most points at the end of that round will win the game. But let's show you how the game works. So, first and foremost, uh, at the beginning of the game, uh, we'll pretend we're playing a four-player game, I guess. Everyone who is not the first player is going to get an acorn like so. Now, the first player is going to choose to ask a question to anyone at the table who has an acorn. So they might say, you know what, I'm going to ask you an acorn, so I take your acorn right there, and then they're going to pick a question to ask. So let's see if we can find ourselves a question. So, which would you miss more if it ceased to exist, uh, doors or air conditioning? So that would be the question right there, and you're asking the question specifically to this person right here. So this person is going to look down at their A and B tiles, and they're going to decide whether or not, uh, which would they miss more if it ceased to exist. So this one's kind of tricky, because air conditioning is really kind of amazing, but doors, those are also pretty essential. Like in the wintertime, especially living in Indiana, not having doors would really stink. Oh man, I still gotta go air conditioning. So if I were the guesser, or if I were the... Um, if I were the person being asked the question, I would pick A or B. Now, everyone else is also going to be picking A or B, trying to predict what this person is guessing. So let's say, you know, I know Jimmy really likes doors, so I'm going to go A. Now, if I felt super confident in that answer, I could also play this token right down here, which means if I'm correct, I get to move three spaces as opposed to one space. The other token is going to let you move ahead the same number of spaces as people who missed. So let's just say that this person and this person got it incorrect and I played this. Well then boom, I would get to go two additional spaces forward. 
But anywho, this person is eventually going to reveal their answers, and then all the other people who are trying to guess what that person said get to move forward if they got it correct. Now, this person gets to move forward for every person who was incorrect. So let's just say that... Um, he said doors and everybody else picked air conditioning, then he would get to move forward three spaces. These cards get discarded. I would draw back up to my full hand size of five. And now the person to my left, because it just goes in a clockwise circle, is going to pick someone to ask a question to. And they have to make sure that they pick someone who has an acorn, so they might pick this person right here. So they now have two acorns. It says in the rule booklet, if you're not sure who to pick, then they generally recommend uh, picking someone who has the most acorns. But that's really what you're going to do. There's a couple other special things. Once you, your uh, little squirrel character gets to here or to here, you get to retrieve one of your special kicker tokens. Because I didn't mention this, but when you spend one of these, it goes up here and you lose it until you get to here, uh, or excuse me, until you get to here or to here, at which point you can take one out. Also, at the beginning of the final round, you can also take one out of there as well. So you're going to have these pretty judiciously. You will, you will be getting them back pretty quickly, which is nice. Uh, but that really is all you're going to be doing in the game. And that, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play. That's a question. All right, then. That's a question from CGE. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Three to six players aren't restricted player count. Especially considering, uh, I think most people are going to play this as a party game. That's a disappointment. It only goes up to six players. I felt like if it would have went up to eight players, it really would have made this game a lot easier for me to recommend. Another con that I have with this game, it's very light, it's very simple, there's next to no strategy, except for, I think I know what this person is going to answer, so I'm going to ask this person this specific question, because I'm pretty sure I'll get it right. And that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, I was hoping for a little bit more strategy, I'm going to put it like this. Code names is a very simple party style game. It feels like it could be a mass market game, to be honest with you, but it just had that it factor. It had that extra little bit, that extra little oomph. It's like, this game is fantastic. Say anything. Wits and Wagers, same thing. They just had that it factor, and that's a question just did not have that for me. Uh, it was just a little bit too repetitive. And continuing on with the cons, other things I did not like about it. It says age is 15 plus, which scares me a little bit because... That tells me that I cannot play this in my classroom, that I cannot play this at youth retreats, because this is a fantastic thing to play with kids, ages 9, 10, 11, 12, and I did bring it into my classroom, but there are a couple, I'd say probably less than 10 to 15 that I saw, uh, of these little parts right here that might be something that some parents could get offended by. Oh, you're talking to my kid about, uh, you know, smoking cigarettes or alcohol or something like that. Just, and that just, ugh. As me, personally, as a parent, I would have absolutely no problem with that. You know, discussing things with your kids like that is actually a good thing. Making it an open and honest discussion about things like that, I think, is a fantastic thing to do. But not all parents agree with me on that. And some parents, I could see get throwing a hissy fit because you talk to my son about smoking cigarettes or something like that uh, in a game. And, <clears throat> and for me, personally... That closes this game as a game that I could take into my classroom or youth retreats. And that really narrows the scope of this game and makes it purely for me just a party game. And I'm not the biggest fan of that. Any other cons that I have with the game? I wish there was more choices. You only get A or B. And yes, there is a huge variety of questions that you can make with these cards. And there's actually a ton of cards and that's fantastic. But I just wanted a little bit more, and I wanted the it factor, and that's what I'm going to keep going to. This game just did not do something for me, and I can't pinpoint exactly what that is. Because moving on to the pros, I think that's a question is a good game. And I think I can definitely recommend this game if you think you can, your kids can handle this and you can play this as a family game and both a party game. Because then, if you can use it as a family game and a party game, I think it's going to hit the table a lot more routinely. But strictly as a party game, I think it's a good party game. It feels mass market to me, but it just does not have the it factor. But what did I like about the game? So first, I like the fact that there's those uh, extra little kicker tokens. That makes it a little bit more interesting. Uh, the components are nice. Uh, I like how the little question circle works, and so there is a good variety of questions, and I like the debate. I like talking about the questions afterwards, and if you just answer questions and say, oh, I picked A, 
move your things, let's go to the next question. This game is going to fall flat because where this game succeeds at its best is when people are talking and discussing their answers. So make sure that your group's going to do that. Maybe be the first person to get picked so you can talk and discuss your answer or something like that. Um, the rule booklet is very clear. It's very concise. Uh, I... I'm not a big fan of how lengthy the rule booklet is, even though it says clearly on the front, just read the yellow parts and you can learn the rules. It's still, I feel like it's going to scare some people away. People are going to get this at like a Target or, uh, you know, they're going to get it for Thanksgiving or Christmas. They're going to open this rule booklet. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, there's so many rules. Let's just go play Trivial Pursuit or Time's Up or, well, not Time's Up, Trivial Pursuit or some other mass market crap. So I worry that that's going to scare people away. I worry the ages 15 plus is going to scare some people away from potentially what could be a really cool family game. <clears throat> and in the end, that's a question is good. And I can recommend it, especially if you're going to use it as a family game and a party game. But for me personally, it did not give me that it factor. It's not one that I'm going to be keeping because it is purely just going to be a party game for me. And I have other party games that have higher player counts that do things similar that I like better than this game. So in the end, that's a question. I think it's a good game, just not good enough for me in my personal opinion. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. In the comments below, let me know role-playing games, yay or nay. For me personally, nay. Obviously, I'm a board gamer. Now, I do enjoy the role-playing. The few times that I've actually gotten the opportunity to do role-playing games, it's just I don't have the time and commitment to do it. And I've tried to read some of those source books, and it's just whoosh, completely over my head. And I've even read, like, really simple beginner's ones, like, uh, what is it, uh, Dungeon Fantasy from... Steve Jackson Games, which is supposed to be, you know, built from the ground up to be for new people, and it still was completely over my head. But let me know in the comments below. Role-playing, yay or nay, and as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.